What's up insiders, in this video I will answer a question no one asked me but I, I'm just dying from inside out to share this information with you. Is roofing the most profitable trade in construction? I've been in many trades, I've been in flooring, cabinetry, insulation, I have 10 jobs under my belt. Let me tell you, roofing business does stand out. I did start a roofing business in 2013. I did sell a roofing business in 2021. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about roofing business and how it's different from other businesses. As a matter of fact, I teach in roofing school how to start and grow a roofing business and I help other trades to get in the roofing. I help a lot of remodelers, a lot of tree guys to open either branch or completely transition to roofing business. But let's talk about it. Is it the most profitable business or there's something else? And I'm gonna describe to you what a roofing business is today in 2022. I'm gonna give you seven pros about roofing business and seven cons. I'm making this video for any tradesman who's trying to get into roofing or maybe you are on the labor side today and you're planning to open business in the near future and be your own boss. This video is for you. Let's go. Roofing business is awesome. It gave me everything I have today. I dedicated seven years to it. It's beautiful business. It's very profitable business, but it's not easy business. Let's talk about pros. Number one pro that you have, it's large ticket items. I mean, average roofing job in the United States today is north of $10,000. A couple of years ago was 10,000. Today it's probably 12 to 15,000. So you're just moving a lot of money compared to other trades like painting or flooring or drywall jobs much smaller dollar amounts so by default if you do 100 jobs even at ten thousand dollars you're already dealing with one million dollars where you know if you do like bathroom remodeling kitchen remodeling you cannot do 100 so it's very large ticket items that's definitely a pro because it also goes pretty fast. Second pro is much easier to please homeowners. I have been in flooring business. I have seen people doing final walks in other remodeling, uh, like kitchen uh, trades and you know bathroom remodeling. And let me tell you, when you finish the job, before you get paid, people will tear your job apart. I mean, I remember when we were doing custom paintings and additions and stuff like that, at the end of the job, we would give homeowner blue tape and homeowners would go around the property, around the project, and they would pick any imperfections. You know, if you install flooring job or uh, tile, they would pick, you know, little uh, hair uh, cracks in the grout, in the tile, siding, same thing. I remember being in North Dakota with a client recently and the homeowner was giving him like 10, 15 items to work on a siding property. Let me tell you about final walk with the homeowner after you complete a roofing job. You look at the roof from the driveway, you ask them how it look, they look at it, they say it looks good to me. And well, it looks good to you, it looks good to me. See, people are not going on their roofs. I mean, some will do, there's always exception to any rule, but think about it. You're gonna finish 10, 20, $30,000 job and the homeowner is not even going. I mean, the only thing they care about, if it looks okay and it's pretty forgiven, and if it's uh, gonna leak or not, which is with underlayments, if you know what you're doing, you're not gonna have that problem. So it's much easier to please the homeowners. You have to worry more about cleanups and setups and noises, things around the job than actually the job. Number three is expectations are much lower. Lower expectations means homeowners don't have to be home. You know, they not gonna put a chair and watch you do it. A lot of times people go to work, come back, roof is already done. They're impressed like, oh man, you finished all of this in one day. Thank you so much. Here's your check. Thank you very much. Where if you think about bathroom remodeling or kitchen remodeling or flooring jobs, carpet jobs, you have to move a lot of furniture. You have to make sure someone's always home. You have to uh, maintain dust so nothing breaks, you know, nothing falls apart when you bang on those walls. So many variables when you work inside the homes. When you're outside, especially on their roof, 
you know, just make sure you don't put ladders against their siding. Don't, when you throw shingles, you watch for that wind so nothing kind of uh, returns and um, destroys their uh, windows or siding with the marks from the shingles. But that's about it. You have to protect uh, your debris when you throw it on bushes and stuff like that. But overall, your expectations in, is much less than uh, in those trades when you work inside the house. Number four, you don't really need a capital required. You don't really need capital to start a roofing business. Like to start a restaurant, for example, you need to think about location. You need to have so many things in place uh, with, with the state, with, you have to set up a payroll, you have to have actual employees, you have to have a kitchen, you have to have equipment. With the roofing business, even if you don't have money, I started my roofing business with $2,000 in my pocket and I built multi-million dollar operation pretty fast. You will have to start investing your profits in the business right away. You have to be very smart with the money and you have to learn how to manage money from the day one. But in reality, you can get a credit line with the big retailers, supplier houses like ABC, SRS, Beacon. They will give you 30 days worth of credit to buy materials from them. You can use it then to finance those shingles. And as long as you pay it within 30 days, you're pretty much financing your entire operation. So you sell the job, you, even if you don't have money or even, even if you don't get down payment, you're risking it, like you, you do take risk, of course. So what if homeowner doesn't pay you? But overall, if you're good at what you do and you move fast, you can use suppliers money to buy materials to start earning money in the roofing business. So no capital required. You don't have to have office. You can do it from home. You don't have to have a big team. You can be your own boss and wear five hats if you want. You can sell the job, you can manage the job, you can use someone else's cash to finance the job. No capital required in the roofing business. Number five, you can use subs. Something that many people don't like, I don't like it myself, I prefer different relationships, but the reality is you can go in business, not to have single employee, subcontract all the work and get away with it. Homeowners might give you a hard time, you know, by asking who does the work, is it you or is it your company, is it your employees or is it your subcontractors, but most people don't care. You can start a business today, you can start subcontracting and it has good and bad to it because now anybody can do it. Anybody can subcontract the job as long as they can sell. But in reality, you can be that guy. You can start a job today, you can start a roofing business today and you can subcontract all your labor as long as you have good subcontractors who will not let you down. Number six, I absolutely hate this one, but this is reality. It's ugly truth about a roofing business and I'm gonna put it in pros. You can rob Peter to pay Paul. If I would be more politically correct, you can finance your operation from future profits. That's how business coach should call it. For me, it's Robin Peter to pay Paul. If you're broke, if you have no money, you can literally start selling jobs and use profits from the jobs to cover holes that you have right now. Because you do need to immediately to start saving up for work comp, you need to money to market yourself and if you're spreading yourself too thin, you might get in a hole, but essentially you can use your first deposits to buy your first equipment, to rent your first warehouse, to cover your first overhead that will be coming in. Because if you're starting with no money, you can literally treat your, and I'm not advising it, this is not advice, but this is what a lot of people do. They go in business, they sell a lot of jobs, they understand that they need to spend money on marketing, they need to buy certain things, they need to buy vehicles for their sales reps, iPads and stuff like that. So they're tapping in early on in deposits uh, from jobs they didn't do yet and they financing their business with it. So it's kind of pros because if you're smart with it, you will get away with it, you know, um, 
when your company will become bigger, you're not gonna have a risk not to have money to repay your homeowners in case if they close, um, you know, d decided not to do business with you, reject the contract to ask money back. But early on, you can for sure wrap Peter to pay uh, Paul. You can cover all your expenses from deposits. Just don't play with fire. It's very dangerous game. And number seven is my favorite. It's very easy to stand out. Let's face it, roofers are boring. They don't like to be on camera. They don't like to be charismatics. And those who do become very successful super fast. Reality is in most markets today, you can enter, you can actually build very different, very entertaining brand. You can stand out from your competition despite the fact that there is a three four thousand roofers in town if you want to be very creative if you want to think outside of the box if you want to play with colors if you want to be i don't know like pink roofer like it will work so it's people think that marketing is very expensive and it is but if you're creative you can become a rock star in your town and because your competition is not doing it. Most roofers, they're very old school. You know, they do something for the same thing for 20, 30 years, they don't wanna change. And we live in a world where it's a TikTok and Instagram and staying out. And if you're willing to try new things, you can start a business today and on a very small budget, you can stand out from a competition and uh, gain huge market share. Now let's talk about cons because it's all good and sweet and if that would be this easy we would not have so many bankruptcies and we would not have 90% of roofers going out of business. So a roofing business is easy just like I show you. Anybody can do it but it has few cons and you have to pay attention and know about them before you enter the game as well. Number one, very expensive advertising. One of the main reasons advertising is so expensive because roofers move a lot of money and we already have big players in most markets. So what's happening is those big brands are bidding for advertising spots on radio, on TV, on Google. And what's happening when people are bidding for something, the price goes up. So you can expect to pay anywhere from $50 to $150 per click not per call, not per lead, per click, just for people to click on your ad. Think about it. You give Google $1,000, you get 20 clicks that might convert into appointments, boom, $1,000 out of the window. Where in other businesses, in other uh, trades, it could be $10 or $15, much cheaper. But because it's so competitive, just prepare to spend a lot. Most companies, and this is what we teach in roofing school, will spend at least 5% from their revenue on marketing. So if you have $100 million company in town, they might be dropping two to $5 million in advertising. And how are you gonna compete with that? Good luck. Number two, roofing business is pretty risky. When you start early on and you don't have that capital, very few things can go wrong that can put you out of business. If few homeowners don't pay you or don't pay you on time, or if you get an insurance restoration and you start working with the Allstate and State Farm, now you might be doing very big projects and you might have uh, legal actions, whether against you or the homeowner or both, because it does happen. So think about, early on finishing $60,000, $70,000 job when insurance company is not releasing the money or maybe pay the homeowner, but homeowner is not paying you. Like, what are you gonna do? It's a big ticket items. First, it was pro because it was large uh, ticket, but now it's kind of con because if something goes wrong with the job, you're out of $20,000, $30,000 you don't have. And you have to be very creative to fill that gap or fight for your money. Happens all the time. Hopefully you're not gonna have it. Uh, in my first couple of years, I didn't have any bad debt. People paid me on time, but there's few cases that I have to chase my money. And sometimes it's hard. Like if someone did not pay you for a $25,000 job, final payment of 12, 13 grand, 
now you don't have a payroll to uh, on Friday. Like you don't have money to pay your subs, your employees. Now you might be losing people and it's not your fault. Someone did not pay you on time and you were spreading yourself too thin, you're cash poor, not your fault again, but this is how, this is how roofers go out of business all the time. They don't manage their cash well and their employees and laborers, subcontractors leaving them because they cannot work for someone who's not paying them. Third con is lots of bad competition. In many markets, roofing is wild, wild west, just because how easy it is to get into the business, low cost of entry, just because how easy it is to subcontract and rob Peter to pay Paul. Early on, it was pros in my book, but now it's all becomes con because so many companies are doing that and you have to compete with them. You have to compete with people who are not ethical, people who uh, sell on the cheapest price, people who don't play by the rules and waive deductibles, people who don't have insurance or not licensed. So you have to meet your numbers and you have to charge the right price. They don't have those expenses and you still have to compete with them and there's a lot of them. So it's definitely con in the roofing business. Number four also comes from those big ticket items because you move in a lot of money, you have huge room for theft. Recently here at Roofing Insights, we did a story about um, ex-employee of roofing company stealing money uh, from homeowners using business cards and old contracts. Happens all the time. In this business, your receptionist can steal from you, your sales rep can steal from you, your competition can steal from you, your homeowner can steal from you when we talk about insurance claims and stuff. So in this business, people go a little bit crazy when they see a large amount of checks in their hands. Someone who've never seen big checks in their lifetime can look at a $30,000 check and go a little bit crazy. You don't have that problem in McDonald's. You don't have that problem in you know, flooring business or painting business when amounts are much smaller. But in the roofing business, imagine if you have a dispute with a sales rep and that sales rep have five checks in his pocket totaling $50,000, dollars He might have, you know, he might take chances to do something unethical, try to cash those checks or run away with them and see what happens later. Of course, it's dangerous. Of course, he deserves to be in jail, but I've seen it. I actually testified in court against one of my sales reps back in the day. He stole from his own church and I was involved and you know, the guy has a felony today. But e even ethical, the most ethical, well, I don't think the Christians or people who claim to be Christians in the workplace are the most ethical, but you will deal in this business a lot with theft and usually people who preach talk about ethics and morals and all of that, they're the worst. If someone's opening line is how good he is and how ethical he is and uh, how honest he is, usually just watch him very closely because those are the people you cannot trust. Good people do not talk about them as a good people. Anyway, huge room for theft in this business, watch out. And I'll just share this. I have a receptionist walking away. She was 19 years old. We found her through a temp agency. She literally uh, walked away in handcuffs three years ago from my office. She stole $7,000 from us via PayPal, cashed five checks, uh, actually wrote it to her ex-boyfriend. She had access to, uh, to our checks and uh, she paid her credit cards <laughs> with our business card. Like three different ways. She only worked for us for 30 days. It's just uh, absolutely crazy. Temp agency that sh sent her did full background check the whole nine yards and she stopped coming to work, started lying to us and I figured that was her because I was looking who did it. Absolutely crazy. So theft is a huge major problem in the roofing industry. And unfortunately, there is no easy solution. I, people always say, well, you trust Bill. How can you know? If someone wants to steal from you, he will find a way. You might as well put cash on a table in your office because you know, if you're gonna try to hide and put safe and everything, those who wants to steal will find the way. So you just have to be a little bit better at screening people who you hire 
reading their characters because if someone wants to really tap in and again if you if you watch like american greed shows and others you will see the people who still usually the nicest people a lot of times it's family a lot of times it's our relatives who we hire and just trust to manage our money and sometimes it's just their brain gets corrupt when they see large amounts and they just start chipping away something for themselves crazy stuff number five roofing business have a lot of hidden rocks let me explain when you start a business you don't think about it you don't think about audits you don't think about osha fines it's a risky business and uh, government will let you to open a business to run a business but there's also a lot of rules and the rules are like you have to train your employees on safety you have to uh, submit payroll reports to work comp you have to do a lot of things right and if you don't sooner or later you will get in big trouble and let's say you open a business and you did one million dollars in sales and you're like hey i'm on top of the world everything good and then you get a bill for fifty thousand dollars from a work comp audit because whatever like it, it, if you ask my opinion work comp is the biggest scam in the united states so many roofing companies go out of business because of it but nevertheless it's a hidden rock and you have to be prepared for it and most business owners in the first second year in business are not ready for it recently i was talking to one of the guys who we feature on this channel a couple of years ago he almost went out of business on the second year he got hundred and fifty thousand dollar fine from uh his work not fine i guess it was a bill he has to settle wiped off all his profits for that year it was very hard like it's it's hard to swallow hundred and fifty thousand dollar bill when you're not seeing it's coming so watch out for those hidden rugs the roofing industry has plenty of them number six it's easy very easy money uh, to lose money on the big projects i'll put it as a big project losses we have a big contractor here in minneapolis when they were building U.S. Bank Stadium, their contractor who did the flat roof part went out of business, underbid it. Like one mistake on paper, you signed a contract that you guarantee something, you will go out of business. One of the biggest losses for me was in 2020, we have sold metal job and it was almost a $100,000 project. And our metal guy who was installing a metal subcontractor pushed to install his standing seam instead of what was in the contract sales manager at the time approved it production manager managed the job at the end we have a huge problem uh, the owner wanted to install solar panels on top of that roof and because we changed the design not what we agreed in contract uh, we could not figure out how to install solar uh, on top of new profile. We, uh, for, for three, four weeks, we were looking for new clips all over the country, um, contacted all manufacturers who produces those clips, could not find one, had to redo it. Cost me $70,000. One mistake cost me $70,000. Happens all the time. We were able to, uh, work it out we start over like the guy provided labor but still at the end of the day we still lost tons of money so be very careful if that would happen to me in the first year in business i don't know what would happen i would have to take a loan i would have to take equity from my house i don't know but if you're not careful and i promise you this mistakes will happen but uh, if you watch our interview with Kevin Delaney, one of the reasons he did not go into commercial space and he kept residential um, roofing as a main business model because he did not want to take a risk on a large projects. You know, if you don't get paid on a large project, it will uh, put you out of business. If you make a massive mistake in office, something goes underestimated you will lose a lot of money you can go out of business of that and big projects means usually big losses if you're not careful if you don't know what you're doing and the last con we have today is big overhead unfortunately you have to start hiring people you do need to have office uh, you're very limited if you're working from your home 
obviously many, many contractors say, well, I can open a business and I can uh, manage it from my basement. Well, you can, but you're gonna be very limited. If you wanna have receptionists, salespeople, you wanna separate business from personal and sooner or later you will need uh, an office. And the problem with the office is, Roofing is very seasonal. Even in warmer states like Florida and Texas, it still dies down in the winter time. You don't have a lot of requests. People don't think about roofs during you know, Thanksgiving or Christmas Eve, right? So in the winter time, people only dealing with emergencies. So season slows down a lot. Your competition, hungry competition is still there. So let's say you have 3000 roofers in town. In the summertime, you might have 10,000 requests per month, and it's enough for those 3,000 roofers to eat. In the winter time, you might only have 500 requests for 3,000 roofers. So what's happening is your overhead never shrinks. So in this business, I would say like too much work is bad, too little work is bad, and rarely is just enough. Usually, you know, in August, you will be slammed, you'll have four or five weeks, two months out, and in the winter time, you're just bleeding, you just need something. And if you have big overhead, if you have a lot of subscriptions, if you have employees, if you have you know, sales reps, everybody wants to eat, it's okay to bleed, to lose money in the winter months, but you have to prepare for it. Like we're in Minneapolis, every year for us was always the same. We make money seven, eight months out of the year and we lose money four months out of the year. And my job is to make sure I have enough in a bank to support my team because I don't like to let go of my team in the winter time just because I'm not making money. Chris, He's our supplementer, he, uh, he still works for the company. I remember when I hired him in 2015, he came to us in November, at the end of the season. We have four insurance claims and we were looking for early on a supplementer, someone who can work with insurance companies and uh, understand Xactimate. He was overqualified for the job. You know, but I hired him knowing that for the next six months, he's not gonna make me any money and it will come from elsewhere. And it worked. For the first six months, Chris cost us money, added to that overhead. And you have to have that mentality that when you see that talent, when you see that vehicle, when you see that opportunity, you wanna buy it. Maybe it's a building, maybe it's a team player, a team member. You have to invest in them. Your overhead will go big but then you have to justify it and you have to make up for it in a busy season so those are my pros and cons comment below what you think about a roofing business comment below what did i miss what do you think about a roofing business and if you are start up or maybe you're planning to start a roofing business comment below videos like this are very important to me. I do answer every single question. I come back to this videos all the time. So if you ask me a question, I will answer it. Otherwise, check Roofing School. We have a lot of lessons to help with all of this. Roofing business is complicated, but you can build $5 million roofing business in about three years. I will show you how if you let me. If you need my help, let me know. If you like this kind of content on this channel, give it a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video.